I know where there's some, right here in the hall clerk. No, no, my daddy. I have a Hello and welcome back um, to part two of the uh, short two video series on, on uh, tank circuits. These guys right here. This is an IF transformer um, from that RCA pair. I kind of destroyed the other one taking it apart to show you how it works. This one I haven't destroyed yet and no plan on it. But what I have done is taken the wires off of the pins. Um, the primary here, the bottom one, goes to these two pins. And the secondary up here go to these two pins. And the reason I took them off is I wanted to be able to show you that you can measure the, um, measure the characteristics of the of the capacitor and the coil and uh, determine what uh, the the um, what the resonant frequency of this particular circuit is so I, I did just what I did on camera I hooked one lead of my cheap ESR meter uh, up to uh, both sides of the capacitor and we'll look at the capacitance of the uh, primary and it's 152 picofarads. So I made note of that and made note of all the other measurements and they came out like this. Focus down here, camera. The uh, primary, just down here, uh, measured 23, the coil part of the primary measured 23.7 ohms and 0.89 millihenries. The uh, capacitor part measured 152 picofarads. Up here is the secondary, 22.1 ohms, 0.88 microfarads, or microhenries, millihenries, I'll get it right yet, 0.88 millihenries uh, for the inductance of the coil and 151 picofarads for the capacitor is in the secondary. Um, so what we'll do next is get on the computer and show you the output of a, a, a number of applications that show you the resonant frequency uh, of this particular setup. Now what I haven't done is recall in here there are the tuning slugs that are inside. There's one uh, inside here for this coil and another one inside going in the other direction or you can go through the first one um, in here for this coil. So you can change the millihenry value here. Uh, this is an adjustable value and you can change the resonant frequency of, um, of both these circuits. But first let's go see what uh, uh, a resonant frequency calculator tells us the resonant frequency of this particular uh, combination of 0.88 millihenries and 151 picofarads looks like. Here's a, a resonant frequency calculator at physicscalc.com. I'll put the link to it uh, below. Um, and you can choose a calculation. In this case, we want to find the resonant frequency given that we have the inductance of the coil and the capacitance of the uh, capacitor. You can find the inductance given the frequency in the capacity or the frequency in the inductance. But we want this first one. And the primary of this transformer looked like this. Its inductance was point eight nine millihenries here and its capacitance was uh, 152 picofarads I'm going to hit calculate and our resonant frequency is right here in very precise numbers 432 935 hertz um, or 432 kilohertz 
432 kilohertz, 432 kilocycles. That's a bit below our, our requir required 455. So this circuit is not uh, resonating. It will resonate at 432 kilohertz, almost 433. But uh, we want to adjust the coil, the slug inside the coil, so that it resonates at 455 kilohertz. So we'll do that in a minute, but first of all, let's check and see what our other, let me make note of this, 432.935, okay, HZ. Let's take a look at the secondary numbers um, as well. The secondary has, boy, almost exactly the same inductance, which doesn't surprise me, I guess, too much. The capacitance is almost exactly the same, too. So this solution is going to come to be very close. It looks like these two were tuned to each other, uh, but at 432 kilohertz, which is kind of odd. Uh, the secondary is tuned to 436. Point eight two eight kilohertz. So now let's go back to the bench and see if we can adjust that up to uh, four fifty five. All right, what I've done is I have a lead right here coming in. Two leads actually coming in from the uh, my. Uh, leader signal generator into the primary side, this coil, and, the, and then an oscilloscope also strapped to the primary side so we can see what the signal generator is feeding in. It's right here, this waveform. Then on the other side, for the secondary, connected to the secondary, I have uh, the B-channel probe, which is this guy right here. Uh, well, I showed you things you can't see. Let me fix that. So here we have the signal coming in from the signal generator, uh, 348 kilohertz right now. And this is what the B channel is picking up from the secondary of the transformer. Um, I really don't like this box. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to send it back to them because it, it does this. It's incredibly noisy. It's just sitting here being as noisy as daylight and I turn off all the LED and fluorescent lights in here and it still does that so it's it's uh, it has some handy features but it's not up to snuff for my needs I just don't need all that noise it's a noisy trigger I think is what it is circuit anyway we're looking at the input of the signal generator into the primary and here is the uh, output side the secondary stage of the uh, of the RF tra IF transformer and we're running at 348 kilohertz. Now I'm just going to sweep this down. You can track the frequency right there. I'm just going to sweep this down and we'll see what happens. And at 318, 313, right at 314 kilohertz, we get a big signal on the secondary side. These are both at 100 millivolts per division. Now I'll make sure I don't have the um, nope. They're both at times one. Uh, so we get a big, some big signal out here. So if you were looking at the output of this transformer in terms of signal strength, you would say it's peaked at four three hundred fourteen kilohertz. That's kind of low. We need it around four fifty five. If we run this frequency here up to 455 or so, right 
right there. We got almost nothing down here. And you say to yourself, the calculator said it should peak at 432. And that's true, it should have. Except we changed one condition. Where is 432? I was looking. We should have our big transformation. We should have a, uh, the signal here reproduced at least that big, if not bigger, down here. And we do not. And why is that? It's because we hung a whole bunch of capacitance off the transformers. We added a whole bunch of capacitance, probably some inductance too, by adding all these probes and wires to this thing. So this is designed to be in a circuit. It's designed to be tuned in a circuit. Um, but for demonstration purposes, I'm going to try to tune it out of the circuit. And uh, we'll see what, uh, what that does for us. I'm going to move the camera one more time so we can see all of this, hopefully. Zoom this out a bit there. So what I'm going to do, we're we're feeding it to uh, 432. I'm going to bump that up to 455. Right there. And now I'm going to start playing with the slugs. It might be that I can't adjust this into the range we want it to be, but it might be that I can. I'm going to start with the primary side, this one right here. Um, if this is mistuned and you're feeding a signal in of a specific frequency, 455 kilohertz uh, in our case, we're actually adding a bit of a load to the... Uh, it's not transferring as much energy as you would hope it would. Um, so what I'm going to do is see if I can improve this wavelength a little, or this uh, signal strength a little bit by tuning it. And I'm going to put my tuner in the first one and through that one and into the second slug. So I'm in the slug for, for the uh, primary now. We'll just see if this makes any difference. I kind of expect it not to because we're pumping, pumping so much signal in there. And it's not. Okay. So we'll back out and see if we can adjust the secondary to pick up something closer to 455. And again, we may not be able to because of all the crap I've got hanging off here. Yeah, you can see the slug is coming out the end right there. So that's not going to work either. And we've gone in as far as we can. So we're not going to be able to do that simply because of what we've got set up here. Now I'm going to do one thing before we give up. I'm going to switch both probes to times 10. When you uh, switch a probe, a oscilloscope probe to times 10, it reduces, it reduces greatly the load that you're placing on the circuit. So there, that's off to times 10. We'll see if we can get this down to 50 millivolts, as good as we're going to get there. Um, and 50 millivolts for the other one. And now we have a, actually some signal coming through. Let's see if I can do any tuning here this time on the secondary. Actually, I'll try the primary again first. Uh, nothing terribly significant. Let's see what the secondary does. Oh, see that? So you can see the secondary changing. It's actually peaking at 455. You can see it peak. This lower signal gets as bigger when you hit the right. Yeah. So that's actually peaked at 455 kilohertz. Um, again, the What's supposed to be happening is this is all supposed to be, this is calculated to work in an environment where all the other capacitances and inductances around this transformer are known. 
and they're and taken account or accounted for and then you can uh, pick the values of the coils and the capacitors to uh, to work at, at uh, maximum efficiency but we've actually managed to peak the secondary here we have uh, we have a you know what is in essence an overpowering signal coming in to the primary but we're actually able to tune the secondary to 455 which is why the signal is so much nicer than uh, on the primary. Uh, what else do I want to say about that? Not much. Um, this this second video and the last video in this particular chunk uh, again was just to show you uh, what those values, the capacitance and the inductance in a tuned circuit mean or a tank circuit, uh, how you can adjust them in our case using uh, iron core slug inside the coil. You can also adjust them using a uh, uh, transmitter or a transmitter uh, uh, air core uh, capacitor um, or a combination of the two. Uh, but in this case with this particular radio it's an iron core slug inside the coil. Uh, with others, it may be uh, a capacitor you're moving around. Uh, we managed to achieve some peaking at 455 kilohertz, um, and that's good. I think that's all I wanted to do this time. So my first short one in forever, I think. <laughs> anyway, that's all I got for this one. Take care, and I'll see you next time.